Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. In early spring, the tundra swans arrive at Coeur d'Alene Lake, and there they die. What is happening? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, if you own property, you will have to deal with surface runoff. And in today's video, we have the top things you should know. Number one. What is surface runoff? Surface runoff, also known as stormwater runoff, is water flowing on the ground surface when excess rainwater, stormwater, meltwater, or other sources can no longer infiltrate into the soil. Number two, how is surface runoff generated? Surface runoff is defined as precipitation first and foremost. It is caused when rain cannot infiltrate into the soil and must run over the surface instead. Number three, how does human influence affect surface runoff? Urbanization has increased surface runoff because it has created more impervious surfaces, like pavement and buildings, that don't allow the water to infiltrate down through the soil to the aquifer. Number four, why can surface runoff be a problem? The main problem with surface runoff is that large volumes can overwhelm storm drains and cause localized flooding. But runoff also gathers sediment and pollutants when it runs over surfaces like driveways and roads, and this can end up in natural waterways. Finally, water that doesn't soak into the soil can't recharge local groundwater sources, and this can ultimately affect how much water is available for human consumption. And number five, how can you manage surface runoff on your property? There are many affordable solutions, including adding plants, protecting existing trees on your property, breaking up big impervious surfaces like concrete patio slabs, using permeable materials for paths, patios, and driveways, installing a rain barrel or cistern to catch any stormwater that drains from your roof, covering bare soil with mulch or ground cover, and swapping your lawn for native plants. So that's how you can help prevent runoff on your land. But if you're not worried about flooding around your property, do you still need to concern yourself with surface water? Well, yes, for surface runoff also contributes to another equally important threat, pollution. Which brings me back to the swans of Coeur d'Alene Lake. Like all swans, the North American tundra swan is snowy white with a long graceful neck and a shock of black around the beak. It nests far north in the Arctic tundra before migrating many miles south to the Pacific Northwest to overwinter. One favored stopover spot on their return journey north is the Coeur d'Alene Lake in northwest Idaho. A long, winding waterway nestled between forested hills, Coeur d'Alene from the air looks more like a river, or perhaps a human arm, than a lake. The sandy muck at the point where the Coeur d'Alene meets the Harrison Slough is a tempting spot for the swans, full of edible plants and invertebrates buried just beneath the surface of the muddy water. So they alight in droves, stretching their long necks into the ground and feast on the river's bounty. Then, days later, many die, their bodies discovered by locals in backyards, river paths, and parks. For unbeknownst to the swans, the Coeur d'Alene's mud is laced with lead, a legacy of Idaho's hard rock mining. In 1983, the federal government added the lake to its list of Superfund sites, but cleanup continues today, and residents are still advised to clean the dust from their boots before entering their homes. Yet, as bad as this is, things could get much worse in the upcoming years. Right now, lead, mercury, arsenic, and other toxins are bound up in the bed of Coeur d'Alene Lake, contained by the oxygen in the water. However, if this oxygen ever dissipates, these heavy metals will be released. All it would take is one large algae bloom to suck the air out of the bottom of the lake, and unfortunately, phosphorus nutrient levels, the stuff algae eats, have been increasing in the northern part of the lake. The source of this phosphorus? Surface runoff contaminated with agricultural byproducts, lawn fertilizer, and septic system waste. So to save the lake, the region must limit pollutants in its runoff. 
but this in turn requires buy-in from the many property owners around the lake, something which has not yet happened. For now, it will be several decades before the larger cleanup efforts are completed to remove all toxins from the lake's mud. And there's little an individual homeowner can do about legacy contamination like the mine waste but we can all do our part to keep additional pollutants from entering the waters we rely on for drinking and recreation. Which is why it's important that we all learn about surface runoff and how to control it. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about runoff? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a Land Due Diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listing. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.